So, we are here today with three team members from the item team of VLC Milwaukee. Alyssa, Ben and Laura. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of it. Can you maybe tell us a bit more about yourselves and your team? All right, so we are Wisconsin Lutheran College's only competitive research team. We have about five or six team members, mostly in the chemistry and biology disciplines. We do have an art major and a nursing major as well. I myself am a chemistry major, and I basically plan most of the operations for our team. Um, Alyssa and Ben can tell you a little bit more about themselves. Well, I'm actually a neuroscience major. I was previously a biology major, but I just found neuroscience to be more interesting for my studies. But I still love doing the biology research and just iGEM in general, so I wanted to stick with it. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm Ben. Um, it's going to be a sophomore this is coming up here. I, I just joined iGEM. Um, I'm doing more of the, the lab-based stuff right now over summer. And kind of just excited to, you know, go to my first jamboree, you know, present in front of everybody, meet a bunch of cool science people. So <laughs> very excited. <laughs> what is the main idea of your project? So we've done work with water contamination based projects and water testing kits before that focused on E. coli contamination. But we have done that for, I think, two years now. And we just wanted to do something a little bit different. And since we have a younger team and they're not all super experienced with biology research, we wanted to stick with the water contamination since it's something we kind of know. And we decided to go with lead contamination because it's been a big issue in the city that our school is located in. And we felt that we can try and help out the community by developing some form of test kit that families can use to see if their children maybe got lead poisoning from their water or if it's from a different source such, such as uh, lead-based paints that are used in some of the older homes in Milwaukee. And we just wanted to have a test kit that if people are curious about other water sources, they can use it to test for lead. Oh, cool. So has this always been a problem or is it more in recent years that it's become a problem with that? Um, I think it's been a problem since at least the early 90s. But in recent years, more and more community groups have started raising awareness and there are too many children that are getting lead poisoning. Um, for example, in 2016, according to uh, uh, the... Milwaukee health community groups that we have, there were 21,000 children who tested below the legal limit of lead, but there were also, um, I believe, 171 children who tested for four times the legal amount of lead in their blood, which is unacceptable for any, any child anywhere in the world, and we want to make sure that they're safe. Yeah, that's sorry about that. It <laughs> sounds like a very interesting problem to work with, though. Yes, yes, it is. So what inspired you to choose specifically this project, or did you have any other projects in mind as well? I think this was something that we kind of just agreed upon, but I can let Ben kind of give some more history about the issue. So we kind of, we thought about doing like an E. coli water sensor again, um, but decided more on lead because it more affects our community. So there are like 170 to 200,000 lead water pipes in Milwaukee alone, or in, in Wisconsin, but there's roughly 80,000 of those in Milwaukee area alone. And there's been a lot of controversy in Milwaukee surrounding how like officials and government officials are, are handling the lead water crisis, as some people call it, um, they've been making slow progress in trying to fix the lines that are made of lead. And public groups are starting to um, be upset by this, and they're actually subpoenaing the government and taking the government to court over like allegations that they're mismanaging uh, these resources that they're allocated to fix these lead water pipes. Um, in 
roughly three years, according to the city of Milwaukee, they only fixed barely 2,000 water pipes out of the 80,000. So people are very upset by that. Uh, but, you know, there is some good news. Uh, we recently elected a new governor, and that governor is started a new uh, program to help get rid of some of these lead pipes, and he allocated $38 million to fixing these pipes, replacing them with uh, better pipes that don't you know, contaminate our water with lead. Uh, this is kind of like newer, so it only started within the last like, five or six months when he was elected, but it's a, definitely a step in the right direction. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. So is it a local problem or is it also a local problem? Uh, yeah, it's definitely definitely a national problem. I'm not too sure about global, how, how lead contamination fits into that, but um, one of our local news stations interviewed an expert and he said that there's um, issues in like Pittsburgh and Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is our nation's capital. That's where like the president of our country lives. And to have lead contamination there, obviously it's a big problem. Uh, kind of the biggest issue with lead contamination in America started in a city called Flint, Michigan. So Flint, Michigan is a very, very poor city in uh, Michigan, which is to the east of us here in Wisconsin. And basically what the city of Flint tried to do is they used to buy their water from Lake Huron, which is a lake, again, to the east of us. Um, and they changed that and they started taking their river from the from the or taking the water from the Flint River, uh, which is right next to their city, so it saves them like I don't know, forty million dollars over five years, something like that. But the city failed to like treat their water with um, treat their water with corrosion inhibitors, so all the lead in the pipes, you know, leached into the water and you know, contaminated all the water and caused terrible developmental defects for the children there. And the legal limit of lead, I believe, is 15 parts per billion in drinking water. And there were cases um, done by like Michigan State University where they were getting a thousand parts per billion lead in a sample of water straight from the faucet. So that was a big problem in Flint, definitely. And, and people have died in Flint from diseases and illnesses caused by lead contamination. So it's definitely a big issue in America. Oh, yeah. But is it mainly children or is it also adults who is affected by this? So children are the most affected by lead poisoning and lead contamination. Um, and you don't always see the effects of lead contamination until a dangerous amount has entered your body. So uh, children can get developmental delays, learning disabilities, irritability, abdominal pain, vomiting, and the list goes on. Adults are less affected by lead poisoning because their uh, minds probably aren't as much in the developmental stage as children are. But they have mood disorders, joint and muscle problems and pain, and memory problems, and high blood pressure. There's also other symptoms, but those are the main ones that you get. Like, why is it that lead is such a dangerous, dangerous element for us? Like, what does it do to our brains more specifically? Well, it's a neurotoxin for sure, but uh, I don't have specific effects as how it like yeah. goes about it affecting your brain. It doesn't really like get out of your system. Like your blood eventually won't have lead in it, but it'll stay in your bones. So even like pregnant women, if they get pregnant and they're not even exposed to like lead contamination during their pregnancy, the lead it can leach to their bones into the you know developing fetus and cause uh, developmental delays in, in the fetus. Is this mainly from water contamination or is it also like air pollution and stuff like that? Um, we think it's mainly from water contamination, but Milwaukee also has a large history of lead-based paints and it's been very difficult to determine which families have been affected by the lead-based paint in their home and which ones were affected by water. So there's research being done. One study found that 50% uh, of families affected were due to paint chips in the homes and 40% were from the water and another 10% was from the food that they were eating. But it's not 
super solid that we know of that those are exact numbers that that's for sure what's going on. So we really want to figure out how many homes are actually getting lead water supplied to them versus how many homes have the paint in them. Okay. Um, and how is how are you planning to make your sensor target the lead specifically? So good question. So we're kind of using a lead inducible uh, promoter. So basically we have a promoter and we have our jigs attached to it. And the lead binds the promoter and the promoter transcribes um, a gene. And basically we wanted this, our test kit to be um, inexpensive, you know, work quickly and, and work effectively so it can tell you how much or tell you if your water sample is above a certain amount of lead. So and we thought to make it simpler, we wouldn't do, you know, like a, a common, you know, GFP uh, biosensor like you see uh, some other people do. We're going to do something based around scent. So our plasmid has, you know, the promoter that the lead binds to, and then it transcribes a gene called BSM21, which um, changes a certain chemical that we add to the to the E. coli into methyl salicylate, which has a wintergreen smell. So basically, how our sensor will work is you put a little capsule filled with our E. coli in into your your sample of water, and if you smell wintergreen that sample has a amount of lead over what our threshold is. We have yet to determine like what that threshold can be and like fine tune that, but that's eventually what we're going to get to. Uh, damn, that sounds cool. So it's like by smell, you can identify that it's been contaminated. Yeah, definitely. I think we're going to, one of our problems is obviously with quantification, but we can pretty much fix the gene um, such that it only produces a scent when it's over our threshold we have to figure that out yet still so nice yeah so, so is that your test kit idea as it's called? Yeah, that's a test kit idea um in the future you know since we since uh, Alyssa said we're a pretty young team we want to do something at least a little bit you know simpler for this year eventually where we want to go is we want to produce like a filter for heavy metals so have a filter that's you know inexpensive reusable and that um, filters lead and other heavy metals out of water. One way we were thinking of doing that is using a lead sequestering protein that we saw um, an IGEN team in Taiwan used, I believe. I believe it's Taiwan. So we have yet to you know, do any research about that, but that's where we want to go. Okay. So what can like society do in general if they want to reduce this threat of lead? Or is there anything we can do? Well, you should really test your water on a semi-regular basis to make sure that you aren't ingesting um, amounts of lead that are over the legal limit. Another thing is that if you do have lead pipes, you should turn them on for a while before you start to use the water so that any lead could be flushed through before you actually start to drink your water. Um, lead isn't safe to cook with in your water because it's not just going to boil off, but you can shower and wash things. Uh, with contaminated water. So just avoiding ingesting it is the main issue. Okay. So what do you think like could be the potential consequences of a project? If like if this works, what would be the next step for you? And we haven't we haven't talked about it a ton, but I think we're hoping to maybe get in contact with some city officials or other departments in Milwaukee that focus on water testing and maybe bring our Kit to them and say, hey, is this is this something you can use for families in the area and make it work and make it affordable so people can test and find out if they're at risk for lead poisoning. Okay. Also, people might have issues with putting bacteria into their water. They might be afraid of having E. coli in something they have in their house that they don't really know how to dispose of. So we would have to make sure that we make people feel safe with using our type of product in their homes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So lastly, what does iGEM mean to VLC? Well, iGEM is able to kind of connect our school. It's, it's a very small school. We only have about 1,200 students here, and that's including some adults and graduate programs that we have. Um, and it allows us to connect with other people who share our interests, say 
around the globe because we get to come to the Jamboree and meet other teams and we get to do these amazing collaborations where we can Skype with teams from around the world and share our interests in, in science and kind of community and culture in general. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, what iGen means to each of us you know, personally. Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I kind of, um, you know, I'm only a sophomore, so it was my first year last year. And I kind of found out about iGEM from this organization, you know, party that we had. And I remember going to the first meeting and I didn't understand, you know, a single word of what, you know, the president last year said because it was, you know, very you know, complex stuff and he's, you know, very smart. I thought, you know, well, if he's this smart, he must have learned a lot from my gem, so I should join this club if I want to be that smart. <laughs> and, you know, six months later, here we are. You know, we're doing research and lab all summer. And, you know, I've learned a lot so far, so definitely iGEM has been a big part of my college experience. For me, I actually found out about iGEM through Laura. Uh, she, I think, texted me one day and said, hey, we have, you know, some open spots on the team if you're interested in joining. And I said, you know, why not? I, I love science. I love being in a lab doing research. And so I joined and I was actually able to go to the Jamboree um, last fall in 2018, which would have been my second year in college. And the experience was amazing. I was actually able to present as well. And there's nothing I love more than getting to listen to other teams' projects and seeing what people around the world are doing. Yeah, so I'm the president of the team this year, so it'll be my third year in college. So what I really like about iGEM is that we have a budget for it and we can do research and we can get to see lots of other schools' research from around the world. Our school doesn't have a huge funding for research. Like the chemistry department, I don't think, does much research at all funded by the college. We have to get outside grants for that. So. As a chemistry student, I don't get to do any research, but with iGEM, I actually get to be in the lab every once in a while using my chemistry methods to help further our project. And I really love planning out stuff for this team and just meeting other people through it. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck on the project. Go forward. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Me too.